Hello everyone, I'm Annie Gibbons and you're listening to Memoirs of Successful Women, the podcast where you get to hear candid conversations with fascinating women from around the globe who share aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure their success and what they have learnt along the way. Welcome to Memoirs of Successful Women. Today, I am super excited to introduce to you Ella Staniak, who is one of Australasia's leading voices in inspiring the next generation of female leaders. So, of course, I absolutely love Ella. Ella is a feminine leadership coach. So she coaches female CEOs, executives and business owners to achieve amazing results and definitely to break through the perception of the glass ceiling and to gain their rightful place. All these women should have a rightful place at the boardroom or also take claim their space in their entrepreneurial zone of genius, Ella calls it. So welcome to the program, Ella. Hello, Annie. Thank you so much for having me today. I cannot wait to speak with you and uh, share this incredible space. I really love what you have created here. I am so excited. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's, it's, I love a woman who reaches my excitement levels because I seriously go get really, really um, just inspired by other women who are also just in this space, really pushing women to go, you know what, girls? How about you claim your rightful place? You know, what is holding you back? What is um, making you feel that you are limited in this world? And so I absolutely love what you do. And I love the conversation we're going to have today because as a CEO myself, a female CEO, I know that there are many, many barriers and there have been over the years and we're chipping away, but there is still so much more room to move in this space. So Let's get started. Let's tell the listeners then, what do you do, Ella? How does this work? What does, your, what does your business look like? And how do you help these women who are just like on the cusp of their next level of genius and they're just hitting a wall? Thank you so much, Annie. I would love to. This topic excites me. I feel as much <laughs> as it excites you. Look, I have been in coaching space for the last 15 years and I've always worked with ambitious professional women in multiple industries, initially in fitness and wellness coaching. However, my secret obsession was the power of behavioral change. And so that's what I studied. That's what I implemented the most in my work. That's what I put through absolute tests in in my own life, of, of course, but also implementing that to different areas of clients for one major purpose, to help women create and fulfill that the definition of the ultimate life Hmm. along the years i looked at different areas of body mind and soul integration so today i look at multi-dimensional operational uh, elements uh, of uh, behavior and how that applies to creating success fulfillment satisfaction and extraordinary results not just any results, but extraordinary results, equally in career, in health and well-being and relationships. The reason why I do what I do is a combination of my personal story and uh, professional background. Along the years, I have witnessed so many powerful and influential women who are capable of achieving so much more Mm -hmm. than they were. And they knew that they could, but they struggled with achieving the next level of evolution. And sometimes creating success in one area of life, let's say career success, at the detriment to our values or important areas of personal life, like health and well-being or intimate relationships or anything else, I think is wrong. And I think it sends a really unhealthy message to the next generation of female leaders. Yes, yes, well said. Mm. And so based on that, I developed a feminine leadership methodology that talks about the three main pillars. And this is automatically also a client's journey working in coaching partnership with me. The three main pillars are alignment. Mm -hmm. And nine out of 10 women I work with feel out of alignment. Mm -hmm. 
when you're out of alignment, you have conflict. Yes. Out of alignment, you have resistance. And so instead of being in a zone, in a sleep stream, stream in a vortex, you're swimming upstream and life gets hard and eventually you hit that glass ceiling. Yeah. Then number two, beliefs. I specialize uh, in uh, unconscious beliefs, especially those elements in our identity that we created in childhood, the elements of our identity that drive our behaviors and decision-making today in our adult life, the same elements of our identity which do not necessarily support us achieving our life's purpose, mm. our mission and vision in life. Yeah. And the third element, it is connection. I have observed a high volume and a high percentage of women in the space of disassociation from themselves. When a woman disconnects from herself, from her heart, and enters this continuous state of doingness rather than beingness, eventually she will experience consequences of it. Mm -hmm. She might struggle with embracing her feminine qualities. She might struggle with connection in personal and professional communication, informing relationships. And eventually that leaves her feeling frustrated, depleted, and all the, all the experiences that we do not really enjoy embracing. Mm. And so a woman who is connected feels truly powerful. She embraces herself, she values herself, she can create boundaries from a place of connection to self and acknowledging her worth. Mm -hmm. She can have clarity and purpose in what her mission and vision in this lifetime is. So the methodology has 15 different elements. We implement them equally and adequately to one's uh, experience. Yeah, I love how comprehensive it is and how how you have structured it over your, your learnings, but over many, many, many years, 15 years of working with executive women. And it's really interesting what you said, you know, those three words, alignment, beliefs and connection. And then you've actually finished with connection with yourself rather than even connecting with others. A lot of people I know, even through my coaching has been that, you know, who do I need to know? Who do I connect with? Who do I get in touch with? You know, who do I become aligned with and it's kind of like start with yourself right and that's where a lot of your, your coaching is set you know so in, in your introduction it's all about how do women get you know to the next level onto a board into that executive role uh to become you know a high-flying exec themselves uh whereas the foundations of that in your program and definitely in a, you know a lot of programs it's like start with yourself you know and i think these high achieving women actually have been going so fast and as you said doing doing rather than being they've, they haven't actually stopped do you find that many women you coach have actually never had that pause time to go like who am I am I alive if nine out of ten people come at that level and they say to you I'm actually out of alignment you know does that surprise you or does it actually the norm now and it's a sad state of the way we are raised and how we are just so desperate to be achieve 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 and not stopping uh, it, it is really really important to acknowledge that what we have created as a norm as high achieving women does not necessarily and oftentimes does not support what we really want mm. and it does come at the cost mm. because there are so many i feel misconceptions around high performance, misconceptions about what real uh, productive leadership is about. My take on leadership is self-actualization first. Yes. I totally agree with that. I totally agree with that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How many people do you get come to you and they go, that's right, they want your confidence. They want the way, you know, I'll get people saying that to me, you know, and, and I know they say it to other people in that sort of sector that they go, I want to be confident like you. I want to achieve those things. I want your boldness and whatever. Whereas it's not a tip of how to do. It's actually the tip is how to be, right? How to be that for yourself to self-actualize. Yeah. Absolutely. And <laughs> I 
this is really a catch-22 because mm. a lot of uh, people who I work with, we do not exclude. We always have a handful of gentlemen who come to us to also uh, explore the, their different layers of leadership and have that alignment in between their personal and professional life. However, talking about women. Yes. There is, uh, there is this, uh, in the context of self-actualization, it is really important to acknowledge that your confidence needs to come from within. So a lot of my clients have a lot of external confidence. Mm -hmm. They have built really predominantly their confidence around their career. And that area mutated to the point that it, it gives them identity, their healthy and unhealthy sense of ego. It gives them so much that it predominantly became their life. So on the outside, they do not really lack confidence. Mm. But it will surface very quickly if that position for some reason is taken away. You know, if you're in a pandemic and you suddenly lose that position or you're unemployed or you're between jobs and you're suddenly finding your last job, you were so in the zone, you're more than capable and then you're not, not getting that next job, you know, quickly all of that gets exposed, doesn't it? So, so true. Mm -hmm. And that external confidence can be shaken and questioned very quickly. It doesn't have to take a pandemic or loss of job for that confidence to be questioned. Mm -hmm. It can be questioned by a simple question in intimate relationships very quickly, in the relationship uh, that a person has with themselves. For me, as an observer, looking at the person, having a conversation with them, their health and well-being level, how much they value and honor themselves is a very clear indicator of their personal confidence, mm -hmm. uh, their status of personal relationships, and not so much the dynamics of them, because there are multiple people involved, but how they show up in the relationships is also a very clear indicator of their personal confidence. So diving in really deeply in that space of self-knowing, um, self-exploration, self-actualization. There are various different elements that will build that, that journey that are really important to explore. But I do think that even things like pandemic have exposed very quickly what elements of our life as leaders, as leading women have been out of alignment. Hmm. Where have we been out of alignment in our life? Hmm. Is my career in alignment to fulfilling my true passion and purpose? Am I happy here? Am I fulfilled? Am I free? Am I satisfied? And the question, literally the answer it doesn't have to be elaborative. It's just yes or no, right? Exactly. Same goes for our health and well-being. Do I feel energized? Do I have great focus? Do I have clarity? Can I make decisions fast and effectively? Can I make product, productive decisions? I mean, there is no leadership without clear decision making. It, oh. it just comes, it comes with the role. So that's really important, but our health and well-being really determines our quality of decision making. Then we have our personal relationships, whether this is that one intimate relationship or even falling in love or our family dynamic. Pandemic has, gosh, accelerated all the dysfunction that we have been successfully hiding with all easily accessible distractions like screen time, like Netflix time, like uh, all legal addictions. I yeah. mean, food, alcohol, you name it. Or then we have illegal addictions or very unhealthy addictions, sex, gambling, you name it. As human beings, we are very resourceful when it, mask, when it comes to masking our own pain. Yes, we are very good at moving away from pain. So uh, I, I do feel it is a great time, as much as it might sound contradictive, it is a great time to dive in de deep and tap onto who we truly are, what we want, what our legacy is here to fulfill and use this significant change as pandemic that we are handling right now to bring more clarity in our lives. Mm. 
Absolutely. I think now is the best time because, you know, it, it's actually exposed the surface of issues that we knew were happening. What you've been sharing there, I'm hearing is that, you know, you're looking a level down and go, what is the evidence of your balance, right? Of your happiness, of your joy, of your centeredness on, on are you living your truth, right? So when, we're, when life was so busy and you're just doing, 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 you can kind of normalize the fact that you're, you're, striving for something and it's so important that you can sort of say okay well the other things are probably are not feeling quite right but too bad you know I don't have time to deal with those whereas now is the perfect time if if really although it then becomes uncomfortable while you have to address those issues but the people who've done that and I know I've been very busy and you have as well during this pandemic of actually you know using this time so wisely to really go okay let's rip off the band-aid let's have a little look at all of those areas of my life and a lot of it comes down to self-love doesn't it you know am I showing that I love myself in my relationships in my relationship with food and people and um, consumerism and you know even values and positions and bits and pieces and so I think it is awesome how how do you find that your clients you've got people who have a lot of ego a lot of sense of value around image and position um, in the work that you do how do they cope when you suddenly go okay you're really super amazing but for you to go from one step to the next step to the dream role you've got to do all this internal work how, what's the response from those people and do they find it easy do they get excited by it or do they find it quite confronting well both let's talk about two different scenarios in usual clients who reach out to me for help they already have a certain sense of knowing that they do need help and support mm -hmm. I do believe that a journey to expanding your leadership capability or a journey of diving in deep and just dissecting who you are <laughs> so everything can sometimes fall apart so you can bring the pieces together and create incredible identity of yours those people already have a certain sense of importance of needing to reach out for help and have a certain ability to be vulnerable and to be honest, mm. be truthful. Truth is a, an interesting territory to navigate mm. because it is confronting. Yes. If you have lived a certain way, having a set of tr truths and structures, but then we do feel that we are stuck some way in the same operational surface. Deep down there, we know that it's got to take something. Something's got to change. Yes. In usual, through a series of acknowledgements and emotional moments and diving in deep in those truths and sometimes changing the set of truths we realize that the stories we have been telling ourselves are not stories that are truths <laughs> so sometimes through that journey um, the process is already easier mm. and then there is a second scenario so people who <laughs> are still in that momentum of doing 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 mess Mm. and it's allowed them to to create fantastic results in their life therefore they have a perception that the same strategy is going to take them further yes and so they might come in and say well Ella I do not want to talk about you know personal development or all this energy stuff that you're talking about I don't want to talk about faith or spirituality I also don't want to talk about my relationships I just want to achieve x y z exactly i like, want to double my on business i want to yeah. focus on professional yeah i just need to hire you know x amount of people here or i'm you know navig i'm not navigating well in this relationship with my employees or i'm struggling with communications with my partner well as, as a business partner sure uh, associate well <laughs> Let's talk about truth. <laughs> Let's talk about vulnerability. Um, and it might take uh, some momentum of a few conversations to uh, help the person find their way to understand what they need. My job is to facilitate a change, to facilitate that journey, um, 
but also I will hold integrity in my business and to my methodology and to what I know is important for people to acknowledge. Um, and so if we can meet somewhere halfway, fantastic, we'll have a great journey. If not, that's great too, because <laughs> there, there is perfection in, in everything. So the, let's say the strong egos or the very strong headed or strong minded people, I feel by, by the time they come across my branding and my business, either my not relate to it fully mm -hmm. or if there is something that inspires them in in my core message then we can connect in a conversation uh, I uh, luckily I don't have to be breaking through horrendous egos because as I said by the time we connect there there's already they're ready for it they're ready yeah, for they're it ready absolutely for it. they know what's in store and they're they're ready to embrace it and I think it's so it's so important what I've learned on my career journey is you know in those early years it might even have been through my 30s and 40s some stuff is just from hard work right you just you just don't stop you you really commit 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 and those sort of practices do work because if you do the qualifications get the right networks get those first couple of jobs it does work the c-suite level is actually quite different though and that's where your 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 specialty lies and I, I I totally understand what you're saying there to get to that c-suite level is a lot more about you know that inner confidence knowing who you are doing things in a in, in ways that resonate with you not not based on just the role or the job description you actually can interpret it and lead and little really step up as a leader and understanding the principles of leadership but also in your own unique way and I think the the leaders that I love working with actually go they've got their own style right and they're happy to own it and and people love being around them because so they'll get these roles often because of that x factor that they on paper are you know with you get to a level that a lot of people are similar, but something unique comes out again around someone as opposed to someone else. So I think that is so important that people realise when, you know, what you've done in the past is not necessarily, in fact, it's probably unlikely going to be um, the way you're going to get to that next step, which is confronting because we're comfortable, aren't we? If we've always done something and it's worked, that's why these people are bashing their head up against brick wall going, what is going on? Like I'm a capable person. I've done this formula for 10 years, 15 years. It's always worked. Why is it not working now? And I think that's where the, the block is. Well, that's what I've found in my work. Is that what you find? It's only this moment of why is my formula not working anymore? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, in the world of change, nothing is forever. And whether it's nature or ourselves or our internal processes, we continuously evolve. There, there are a series of microscopic changes happening every mini second of, of a moment. And so if doing this, gosh, have, a, have I not implemented this strategy in my early 20s, but in the continuous doing this and, and work and work and work and work what you do is you are just adding to your day yes at some point you're going to hit your limit hmm. the number of me women that come to me and say I'm just at capacity I am doing so much and I don't understand why am I not producing the results that I could in the past or I don't understand why I am not producing the results that I know I can where I am doing so much i already am working 14 hour days in my business uh, i am you know already sleeping only five hours <laughs> a night yeah well when you're just adding to your day you're just increasing the volume of activity exactly and they've put the value on the doing whereas the value is not on the doing you know the value is actually getting success on your own terms and what and that will um generally be um be more powerful if it's if you you are aligned if you are balanced if you are healthy you know if you actually do have um sleep if you have great sex you know if you you're able to have have time to catch up with your best friends you know if you have time to have those special moments with your children uh that's right it's not about the the doing but i think the focus can easily get distorted that it is on the doing do you find that 
Absolutely, absolutely. And as we talked about it, Annie, at the beginning of our conversation today, that misconception around high performance, as if high performance was defined by the volume of activity in a day. Yes. It is not, it is everything but that. <laughs> That is so funny. That is so true. I get, uh, that's because I'm a CEO of an of a eye health charity here in Australia. I get amazed by every second phone call, someone rings you and they go, I'm so sorry for, for getting onto you directly. I know you are so busy. Whereas it's really fascinating. It's kind of like you're not busier just because you're in a senior role. You're just doing different things. Uh, and it's a really amazing perception that people think that's right to be at the, the, if you're actually looking up the tree, those people must be at a frenetic level. Whereas that's actually not true. In fact, when you really look at uh, um, amazing leaders, the people that I get inspired by, I get amazed by how calm they look, how slow mm -hmm. they walk, how considered they are in their decisions. It's almost like, yeah, the people who get really centered and focused um, get a lot more sort of balance and time. It, it's quite a fascinating thing. It's hard to explain to people, but it is definitely possible. You don't need to burn yourself out to be at these levels. They own their presence, don't they? Beautiful saying. Absolutely. And it is definitely something, um, one of the dominant themes that I work with uh, especially female clients. Um, there is one thing that says, you know, your energy introduces you first. And that really connects to owning your presence as a woman. What I really mean by that, we are very receptive beings. We, through senses and assessing environment, receive so much more so many more bits and pieces of information than just what we see. Yes. So when you own your presence as a woman, you carry yourself accordingly to that. Mm. You walk accordingly to that. You dress and hold yourself according to that. Mm. You speak the tonality of your voice, the tempo, the speed, how many words you get out per minute, the choice of your vocabulary is based on that. Mm. Of course, as you said, the decision-making, how you approach people, how you show up in conversations, how you show up in a boardroom, how you show up in your staff meetings, how you show up when you go to your grocery shop and how you show up in the, in the most important phone call or sales call of your lifetime. Mm. When you own your presence, you know yourself. You own your energy and you regulate your energy. You use your emotions as very healthy roadmap to uh, creating productive outcomes. So there's just so much that can go in, in that bucket of owning your presence, including confidence. As I yes. said, one of the elements. Mm. This is where we look at our leaders and people we get inspiration from. And we can say there's just something about them. Mm. There's just something about them. You want to be around this. You want, you will listen to them. They claim their space or their authority without even opening their mouth. Yes. You just know you can lean on them. You can trust them because they're grounded. They're certain. So there are so many interesting elements and important elements that I feel people overlook when they talk about either leadership development or achieving peak performance. <laughs> it's, it's through that. Yes. Through complete physical, emotional, and spiritual integration. Oh, so many gold nuggets there for the listeners. So many aha moments in just that last few minutes of listening to you. Ella, like seriously, owning your presence, presence, and I, you know, in my world, I, you know, you, I, I love going. Do you have executive presence? You know, do you actually, if if someone was watching you at this time, from the moment that you you show up, that's right, your your energy, your nature, your manner, your tone, your respect, your gratitude, your your everything in your own presence is is on is on show and, and it also shouldn't be then just for show it actually should be the goal is to actually have that as it's natural it's just how I show up 
And I think that for me is the difference. You know, you can get people and you learn these skills and you can see people at different stages of their growth and their self-actualization, right? And some who go, because I watch them even, you know, before the pandemic when, when I'd speak at events and, and so forth, you can see people because um, I watch them from the moment they're sitting and I'm looking at that speaker to the to when they go up on stage and then they they present. And then so some people have got it all perfect when they present, but all the rest of it looks uncomfortable or they're still fidgeting or they're they're not look, owning that presence. Whereas other people, they just look, they're just in their zone for the whole time. And I think that's a it's a massive difference. And I think it's a really important thing to think for yourself. How how do you show up? One start for others of who you how you want to be, and then also then the goal is actually to then make that just automatic, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about um, getting into those C-suite roles. This is the area of your expertise, and I love this area. What are the stats at the moment of women getting these executive roles in different industries, and how do more women get them? Well, statistics have been improving steady but slowly, but we have we have a long journey ahead of us. So today in Australia, we only have between 14 to 18 percent mm. of directors and CEOs of women across Australia. So in all industries. Yes. And we have around 30 between 34 to 35 percent of women. Uh, reaching to up to managerial roles. Yeah. What that indicates is that we became, we as women, I'll be speaking in general terms, mm -hmm. we became quite comfortable and quite good at climbing either the corporate ladder and uh, successfully fulfilling the managerial roles. However, yeah. there is a disconnect between the managerial roles and the number of women actually reaching out for the opportunities that are present today. We cannot say anymore that but we do not, not have, yes, opportunities. The opportunities present themselves more and more. Public organizations are legally obliged to uh, implement their diversity and inclusion initiatives way beyond gender. So this is good news, not only for women, but also for uh, any cultural minorities, any minority groups in Australia. This is also really important to, to acknowledge because there are so many fantastic men in leadership today. Yes. Who are intensively looking for partnering up with more and more women in decision-making in equal respect, and they do struggle with it. Mm. Where I come in is not so much on fighting the system, but sharing the message with, uh, with women to embrace their feminine qualities and lead their career from that place. So we already discussed self-actualization, but take it to that next level of your, your, your career. What do you really desire to change? What changes do you really desire to create? What industries? What change are you trying to, to fulfill in people's lives? So I really do encourage women to go in what we call in coaching jargon, high chunk. Yeah. Search and seek your passion and purpose. And if you don't know what it is just yet, that's okay. Find adventure in finding that big purpose your passion and pursue your career from that place yes not yes. everybody is driven by money or status some people are and that's fine majority of us aren't mm. or sometimes we think we are but actually at the end of the road we aren't that's why we have so many uh decision makers to take today feeling unfulfilled Yes, exactly, exactly. Because they've chased the dream job that pays the right money. But if you're then for purpose, purpose driven, you know, then you spend that time going, wow, you know, I'm doing this job and I'm more than, it's not, it's not a capability situation. It's actually just, uh, it just doesn't fulfill me. It doesn't excite me. It doesn't, I'm not passionate about it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I feel that that, I know that it's a very broad or big umbrella that we just, <laughs> we just opened up, but having clarity in, in your passion and purpose is mission critical in anybody's life because when things come to stretch or things become challenging 
your purpose is something that you can always and forever hold on to and you will not question yourself Mm. as much you will not dive into self-doubt as much you will just be much more resourceful and grounded um, to overcome any challenges in your life so it is really important and then second very obvious step I feel is get support so creating you mentioned Annie at the beginning creating alliances and actively reaching out to connect with the right people it is really important I do feel that it's really also beneficial for women to have personal alliances and professional alliances. I don't know if you experienced that too, but for me, some of my best friends wouldn't be able to support me professionally. Yes, they exactly. might not even understand what I really need. Hmm. Some of them do, some of them don't. Hmm. And I'm fine with that. Exactly. And then in my professional circles, some of my professional alliances will never possibly become my best friend but it's just so beneficial to be with them to be around them to create together to learn from them to observe them to just be in their circles depending on uh, what the outcome here is so it, it's really really important sometimes personal and professional alliances might blend in together and might affect each other I think it's it's really really important to just have clarity on knowing where to go to when you need help, when you need inspiration, when you need progress, where you need growth, where you need evolution. Mm, I think that is such a good point to highlight, Ella, because, yeah, that's right. Not everyone's going to be your besties and they shouldn't be. And you can't sort of cope with that many anyway. It's really important to be very strategic, actually, on, you know, I've certainly found that. And that's why I started my Facebook group, Women Collaborating Globally, because it's actually built this massive network of women who are actually just on that same page, right? They're, they're growing their careers. They're helping each other. They're inspiring. They're sharing their knowledge. They're giving tips. They're giving referrals you know a small percentage might be coming to your friend zone but actually it's 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 what they don't have to you know you're actually just aligning in ways that help you as a professional woman and then there's other ones who might become friends so you get that mix and then you'll also get your some of your besties some of my besties just go I can't believe what you do don't relate at all but go girl you know and that's what you want you want to be able to have that you know that separation that those friends have been sort of founded from a whole lot for a whole lot of reasons you know some of mine it's just that you had kids at the same time and you spend mm -hmm. a lot of time your kids you've grown or and so forth so super super important so those those women who are then um, realizing that they have hit that glass ceiling if you like which what you're saying is it's it is there but it isn't there right in, in one way you know we don't have a 50 percent equality so there's something going wrong but there's also we've also normalized it to say oh we're going to hit or hit a ceiling it's going to be really hard but then there are other people out there like us going no those jobs are there there are people there are they are legally required to offer them to women there are men who are wanting to work you know with that balance it's a great thing for board I know I'm on a number of boards and it's it's wonderful to have that that diversity and men and women working with their own qualities uh, and so you're helping people to say actually how about we start daring daring to dream that it's not it's not a ceiling you can actually push it and just own it own your own yourself to move into those areas right absolutely uh, not long ago I wrote an article glass ceiling who put it there <laughs> love that and look let's just talk about empowerment and disempowerment mm -hmm. as soon as you believe that there are some external circumstances that determine let's just say your success or your ability to produce results you are in some sort of a state of disempowerment yes you've limited yourself right and even though there are some general external circumstances, like, gosh, pandemic, let's talk about the first one, big one. Well, yeah. that pandemic is making us, you know, work on our toes. And it is a horrendous time in human history. There's just so much loss and grief and change that is happening right now. So it, it is difficult. But that's number one. Can we give into it fully? Gosh, no. Yeah. We have to manage it. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's a horrible example, but it's it's current. So it, 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 I've, no, I've no, it's current. What else do we believe is limiting us? Mm. Time, money, our partners, or lack of intimate relationship, mm. our family members, lack of energy, mm. or lack of health and well being. All of those elements can affect our life but also we can take charge of all of these elements mm. as soon as you believe that there is a solution and you will embark on a journey to finding that solution you are moving forward you're no longer stuck mm. Mm. so i could be working in an organization that maybe doesn't necessarily support women and growth. Maybe there is that glass ceiling very present. Maybe there isn't, the, what's, what isn't worked in culture is equal treatment, mutual respect, um, uh, personal development. Maybe all of those elements aren't being worked in the culture. So am I going to stay in this place and allow this place to, to continuously affect me day in? and day out, and day in, and day out for two years, for five years, for 20 years. Oh, that is going to sound familiar to so many people. Mm -hmm. Or am I going to pack my toys finally, or all my belongings in my suitcases and just explore what else is there? Out of billions of businesses, organizations out there, do I have to stay in an organization where I feel I cannot fully contribute? Exactly. Exactly. What That's is holding awesome. you back? What's holding you back really, right? It's the comfort of the, it's the security. I've got a secure paycheck mm -hmm. and I know this job and I don't, you know, I feel therefore comfortable but very uncomfortable, but I've normalized it when that's just the way it has to be. But that's right. The years go on, the decades go on and, um, and what's going to change. So you either have a plan of, okay, can it change and will I be part of that movement or if it's not going to change that's right what is actually stopping you from picking up your bag and trying something new your own way you know and how amazing is that for most women that we work with uh, who've actually then just taken this opportunity to become an entrepreneur to set up their own business to do it their own way oh my gosh like yeah and is it easy no it's actually really, it's, it's full on. It's a lot of hours. It's a lot of learning. It's a lot of, you know, new, new confidence required in certain areas, a lot of asking people for help. But you then suddenly go, I'm, you know, a year or two later, you're, I'm doing my own thing in my own way and I love it, right? It's incredible. Yeah. And you just would not, you, you just never look back. You yeah. never look back. Whether you exit this toxic job or toxic relationship or toxicity in your health when you move away from that discomfort never go back you yeah. just never go back I know. And that's why most most of uh women who i work with are uh, experienced leaders those are the women who are literally exiting corporate world you know in their late 40s um early 50s going i've had enough of this I have had absolutely enough and I'm just going to, I don't know how, but I am going to launch that business connected to my mission, vision, passion, purpose. I know I must. Well done, ma'am. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I think some of the best entrepreneurs are 50 year old women who've actually got this lifelong experience and they've just had enough and they're so super focused and super driven because they've wanted it for so long. They just, they just, uh, I just adore them like because I just, I love their energy and passion to go, you know, because they've also got that slightly nasty, like, yeah, you watch me. I'm going to do it. I've talked about it for years. You know, here I go. <laughs> I know. It's out of my way. I have arrived. Right. Out of my way. That's right. <laughs> oh my goodness. This has been such a delightful conversation, Ella. I can't believe I could talk to you all day long. How do our listeners find you? How do they connect with you? How do they, if you're a woman listening in and you're like, you know what, I'm in that, you know, exact sort of 
level I'm a, I'm a manager senior manager and I just go what is going on here I need that help you know and that's nothing wrong with that we all get stuck at different times of our life and just go my formula is not working is it me is it the system to who I blame uh, if you're that woman and you want to reach out to Ella because you can hear how amazing she is and how insightful she is how do they find you Ella Thank you so much, Annie. I, I loved speaking with you today, but then I knew I would. We, we always connect over a great conversation. I, I think the best point of contact is uh, are two places. The first one, it is my website, www.elastaniak.com. Mm-hmm. You can uh, see the methodology we talked about today, and you can also grab a free resource, 12 Key Steps, to lead and live the ultimate life. These are 12 short videos talking about the 12 key pain points that women in leadership deal with today. And also a tip and advice what needs to be changed or where the attention needs to be called in order to move forward from Mm -hmm. that glass ceiling or um, that space of resistance. So that's a a first point of contact. And of course, LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, Ella Staniak, Feminine Leadership Coach. I share... Um, every week I share either articles or or posts about feminine leadership. We can connect and you can uh, just explore what feminine leadership is about and how important it is for us women to lead, acknowledging ourselves and our natural traits, skills and talents. Yes. Oh, fantastic. So I'm going to put all of your contact details on my podcast platform and also my YouTube channel. And definitely everyone, Ella's been very generous in the videos that she's provided online. I've watched a few of them myself. She's awesome. I love her little top tips. It's really achievable. It really, what it does when you start making those moments of just download a freebie or listen to some, you know, 12 little videos or any bite size, but it'll just activate you, right? And I think that's one of the biggest Step. it's just suddenly going okay I'm going to take a new step forward and I'm going to just you know see what happens here and it gets you excited and it gets you energized and that's I think that's the that's that's what you want you want to just suddenly have a bit of um, a bit of an urgency to suddenly go yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do something today so I encourage you all to reach out to Ella she's part of my global community of women just doing awesome things and I support um, all women doing doing their things their way in their own space and she is blessing so many people and I know she will be a blessing to you so thank you for being on my program today and uh, as a successful woman well how do you measure your success let's let's finish with you know how do you define success for yourself that's a fantastic question the biggest change that I had to implement in my life and I do believe that it was partially related to the fact that um, I launched my first coaching business at 21 being in coaching space you know for nearly 15 years being 35 I mean I've, I became uh, a woman and a person alongside m- my coaching businesses and I definitely f- well followed a guidance of certain business mentors that was very much based on revenue and finances and or number of clients I would coach and I really got to the point where at some point that became my measure of my self-worth and I became so uncomfortable with that Mm. so a tip tip of, of advice here would be please do not ever measure your success by your revenue or number of clients or the success in your business because your business or your career is not you you are not your business you are not your career so today for me there are three important measures and I could not tell you which one is the most important I just know that I have to have these three values and measures in my life in order to be really happy Mm -hmm. the first one of course it is uh, family and motherhood is the leading one Mm. when I know I am being myself and I'm being the greatest mother I can to baby boy, Jordan, tick, Mm. a must have. Number two, it is the results that I see my clients achieving in my business. So their Mm. level of influence, it fuels me. I love receiving those phone calls from clients or text message saying, oh my gosh, this is what happened. Another win, that really fuels me. So rather than my direct um, results in business it's the client's results 
Um, and the third one really important, it is my health and well-being. Coming from 10 years background on fitness and wellness coaching, I do not ever dare to undervalue or create anything in my life at the detriment to my health and well-being. So it's really the energy, the healthy diet, everything that allows me to um, be in that heightened state, oper operational state of energy. Really important. Beautiful. And I love the clarity that you have. And that's the example for those listening in that you can ask a, a leader who's, you know, really claiming her own space and her own truth and, and um, you know, owning her presence, as we've talked about, can actually just go, yes, this is, these are my measures. And so I, I suppose the, the tip of lead, leaving you listeners after listening to this conversation is, you know, do you have that clarity over around your purpose and your passion and your values and how you measure success? I encourage you to just journal down today. What do you think? How do you start measuring that and what is what do you what is your point of reference when you're when you're stepping forward thank you so much for being on my program today it's been an absolute delight thank you so much for having me i really do hope that we provided value today for your incredible women and if there are any questions anybody is more than welcome to reach out i am always open to a conversation thank you so much for having me it's a pleasure Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Memoirs of Successful Women. You can find me at anniegibbons.com where you can download my free resources, get connected on social and check out my online magic transformation program. If you love this show, feel free to subscribe to future episodes and of course, share it with your friends. I'll see you again soon and until then, happy podcasting.